Hi there, Doug Stewin with IT Creations with a rack server from Gigabyte, the R182-Z93. This system supports dual AMD EPYC 7002 or 7003 series processors with Rev A00 and has a large memory footprint with 32 DIMM slots on the system board. It has 10 2.5 inch drive bays up front for NVMe storage and is used for general networking applications. Let's take a look. At only one U, this can easily slide into one of those empty slots in your server enclosure for extra compute and fast resilient storage. By the way, I will mention that there is a long list of these R182 rack servers in Gigabyte's lineup, including the Gigabyte R182-NAO server we did a few weeks ago. Very similar to this one, but with support for dual third generation Intel Xeon scalable processors. And you can see that video here. Just click it now. It'll open in a separate window. Anyways, both designed for networking applications, including file storage, hosting an intranet, file access via VPN, use as a shared internet connection, or as a virtual server. By the way, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel. New systems are definitely coming in. Should we talk about the naming of these systems? No, let's move on. One thing I will say is the AMD Epic-based options have a Z in the chassis name, like this one. Enough said. On the front of the chassis, the system supports all NVMe U.2 drive bays indicated by the green drive tray release levers, and they can be rated together, but we'll get to that in a minute. There's also a small control panel on the right with a few buttons for reset, non-maskable interrupt, power, and an ID button. Then a few LEDs for general system status, plus LAN 1 and LAN 2. Are you interested in the 1U Gigabyte R182-Z93 server? If you are, just click that link to visit IT Creations where you can use our handy custom configurator to assemble a platform to your specifications. Not only that, but you could save up to $500 off on a system that you configure that's listed at $5,000 or more. It's easy, and you can check out all the other great stuff IT Creations has to offer, including top-of-the-line components and obscure parts. It's only a click away. On the back of the system, starting on the left, there are dual redundant 80 plus platinum 1200 watt PSUs. Two PCI card slots on the top and below that, a VGA port, two USB 3.0 ports, two one gigabit ethernet ports with a dedicated one gigabit LAN management port beside those. The ID button and an ID LED. The other two covers are for an optional OCP 2.0 mezzanine card slot on the left and an optional OCP 3.0 card on the right. Both can provide additional network connection options and leak speeds with the OCP 3.0 mezzanine card providing better performance through the PCI 4.0 connection. Management of the system really depends on what you want. Just this single server node or multiple servers. If it's the former, then Gigabyte offers the management console, a browser-based intuitive and easy to use graphical interface with a dashboard overview, temperature, system inventory, logs and reports, power controls, and a few other features. The Gigabyte Server Management, or GSM, is for multiple servers, remote management, and both are free of charge. There are several other sub-programs, including the GSM Agent, which you will have to install on all the other servers to access all of the same features on the management console, plus a few more utilities specific to running a more complex deployment. So you get global remote monitoring and management, plus a few other features like GSM Mobile for remote management via a tablet or smartphone, either Android or iOS. Lifting the cover on this system, you can see it's really packed in there. Each of the two CPUs have 16 memory module slots for a total of 32 active memory module slots with both processors installed. Supported memory includes registered and load reduced memory modules for both second and third generation processors. However, with the third generation processors, you get the 3DS version RDIMS and LRDIMS, which have a stacked die for the DRAM and with a stacked die comes greater density. That greater density at up to 256 gigabytes per memory module is supported by those third generation processors with support for up to four terabytes per socket for eight terabytes total. With second gen processors, you get half that for a maximum memory capacity of only four terabytes with both CPUs supporting two terabytes of memory. With third generation processors, in addition to the increase in supported memory, you also get a performance increase of 19%. Both still support eight memory channels and eight to 64 physical cores and 128 virtual threads. In a two processor configuration, you also get up to 128 PCI 4.0 lanes. The configurable thermal design power of the CPUs are limited to 240 watts with provisional support for 280 watt CPUs. 
And about those PCI lanes, this chassis offers two PCI Gen 4x16 expansion slots in two risers. There are also two slots for expanded network connections with either an OCP 2.0 or OCP 3.0 mezzanine card. The 2.0 uses a BI-8 PCI Gen 3 mezzanine connection, and the 3.0 version is supported in a BI-16 PCI Gen 4 mezzanine slot. Both are optional if you have other plans for the PCI slots instead of installing a high-speed I.O. controller. I mean, all of the NVMe drives up front will plug directly into the board and be recognized through BIOS. However, you could also install an optional grade Super RAID SR1000 NVMe NVMe OF RAID card in one of those PCI slots. That's right, RAID your NVMe drives that supported RAIDs of 0, 1, 5, 6, or 10. I placed some information for that in the description below. I mean, if you're interested. It works by installing a virtual NVMe controller in the OS in conjunction with a PCIe hardware outfitted with a high-performance AI processor. There's also a PCIe Gen 4x4 port on the system board for an M.2 drive, which can be used to support the OS. Although if you do add the M.2, CPUs are limited to only 225 watts. This server chassis has a lot of siblings, with each offering a slightly different set of components. Remember, if you are going with a 1U networking server, then there are eight other choices in this lineup. Check out the R182 NAO server based on the Gen 3 Intel Xeon scalable processors we did a few weeks back. Well, that is it for this edition. Again, subscribe to our page if this content is of interest to you. With all the COVID-induced supply issues, servers have been a little slow to arrive at our doorstep, but I have a feeling the wait is over. They are definitely trickling in now. You can also ask questions about this platform or any other system in the comments section below. We do actually respond to those. Subscribe. Until next time, I'm Doug Stewart with IT Creations, and thanks for watching.